All right, Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this society and the upliftment of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are the children of Yahshua Allah, according to the spirit of, of prophecy, according to the will of Yahweh Shimei Oshai, who have chosen you to be a chosen generation, man. You know, uh, we're gonna start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakal Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. And we come out here to let uh, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans know that they are the children of Yahshua Allah and to let the so-called white man know that he is Esau in the Bible and that his kingdom is falling, man. Con. According to prophecy, according to the truth, man. Yeah, devil, that's right. The so-called white man is Esau in the Bible. And according to prophecy, he's going to go into slavery for his uh, iniquities, man. We can get Isaiah 14 and 21. Because these... Uh, these so-called white women think it's a joke, but it's not going to be a joke in that day, man. All that laughing going to be turned into mourning. Uh, and death is going to find you. Death is going to find you. According to prophecy. You how about you all shot willing to find him tonight, man? This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquities of their fathers. Yeah, so all of these so-called Edomites that's walking around today, they inherited their father's, uh, the riches from their father's wickedness, man. That's why they walk around here comfortable, because of the wickedness their forefathers did, man. And the Lord is telling us to come out here and proclaim that there's a payback, man. Like the brother did a, a beautiful video, the big payback is coming, man. Everything that the so-called white man has done is going to be brought back on his own head, man. What he did to the Native Americans, what he did to the Hispanics, what he did to the Negroes, all of that is coming back on his head, man. And the Lord is allowing him to fill up his belly so that he may vomit it up and be judged, man. You got it. You got it. One more time. Huh. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquities of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Because this is what happens when you let Esau fill the face of the world with cities, man. This is what happened when you let Esau, the so-called white man, fill the face of the world with cities, man. All you have is destruction, man. Defiled nations, man. Thieving, robbery, what you might call gangsterism, man. Lies, man, corruption. That's what uh, the so-called white man breeds anywhere he lands, man. Like it says in uh, Malachi, uh, everywhere he goes, he's the border of wickedness, man. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 1, verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And what did the so-called white man do? He troubled our nation, man. Both the Negro, the southern kingdom, which is Judah, the uh, Negroes, West Indians, and Haitians, and he, uh, he um, oppressed the uh, northern kingdom as well, man, which is the Latin tribes and the Native Americans, man. That's why I said we will be oppressed together in this land. But the Lord said we will overcome in the last, man. And that's why this is only given to a select few. This is not given to the whole world, man. Because the Lord wants to uh, attack them like a thief in the night. But it's being revealed who the devil is, man. Uh, Ishashua, man. Wasted away as he, man. The only nation on the planet without pigment, man. But the Lord said in um, Malachi that everywhere he go would be the border of wickedness, man. And he's filled the face of the world with cities, man. And because the so-called white man has filled the face of the world with cities, all you see is wickedness, lies and corruption and oppression. When they talk shit in their houses, they come out here and befriend you. Because it said uh, as soon as they be born, they come out speaking lies, man. This is, uh, this is Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. I start at 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. So the Lord, according to the scriptures, has indignation with the so-called white man forever, man. That's not changing, man. 
because of his wickedness. Because it says that uh, the soul the soul that's lifted up in him is not upright, man. He's not designed to be righteous, man. Which is why you have wickedness all over the planet, man. It says surely that your turning of things upside down will be esteemed as the potter's vessel, man. Everything that is righteous has been thrown down and everything that is wicked has been raised up in a great dignity, man. And it's not the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua for this to continue forever, man. This is a temporary status, man, for the so-called white I'm man to be on top, man. The places right now. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5. It said, yeah, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep up at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is at death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations, and heap up unto him all people. Yeah, say he a proud man, and keep it not at home, man. And the so-called white man is never home, man. Every, every time he gets the chance, man, he's invading somebody and robbing somebody, man. Lying on somebody, man. It says his desire is as hell, man. And he cannot be satisfied, man. It says in Job 9.24 that the, uh, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And this man is still not satisfied, man. Everything has been given to him, he's still not satisfied. That's why Yahweh Bashim Shah is going to destroy him, man. And never allow him to fill the face of the world uh, with cities again, man. This is Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. For God, for God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So the, 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 the thing that's going to destroy Esau is right out here under his, in, in plain sight, man. It starts with the words, man. But the Lord says he uses, uh, matter of fact, stand, up, uh, stand up first off. Because the things the Lord uses is the things that people least expect, man. The despise of this world is being used to come up against the great of this world, man. Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans on street corners and what you might call dresses to this, uh, to this world is proclaiming the downfall and it's actually going to happen, man. And only we've been given the gift of faith to see that before it actually plays out. You got it? Read it again. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. But power have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Because this looks foolish to the world, man. For us to stand on street corners and tell the world that they're going down, man. Tell America that they're going down. Tell them that uh, thermal nuclear destruction is coming. Martial law is coming. The uh, mark of the beast, the microchip is coming. It's foolish to the world, man. But the Lord is pleased with the foolishness of preaching, man, to save them that believe, man. Because of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, there are going to be a select few that, uh, that make it out of here, man. But we're out here to proclaim the destruction of the so-called white man and the other nations too, man. Whether they believe it or not. It's not for them to believe it anyway. They're heathens, man. And God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Yeah. And the Lord is using uh, this counsel that he put the spirit on to confound the wise of this world, man. To tell the uh, so-called white man that all the power and all the un understanding that you've been given on the left-hand side is not going to uh, help you escape judgment, man. That at the end of the day, how about Shem Al-Shah show his power by putting you on top? And now he's going to show his power by taking you down. Uh, you got three, seven, five. Oh, he got you want to finish that? Three, seven, five. He said, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Yeah, so this looks weak, but this is stronger than what men have, uh, are doing. You have men in the world that are investing in, in houses, that are building up uh, monetary funds, you know, uh, investing in mutual funds, trillions of dollars. All of that looks like strength to this world. But this is where true strength is living, man. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shah is living where people least expect it, man. You got it. This is Psalms chapter 8, verse 1. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might, mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Yeah, so the Lord is showing that he don't need the strongest nation on this planet, man. That he can show his strength through the weakest uh, things of this world, man. 
the, the uh, so-called white man has destroyed our nation, but the Lord, the blessing is that the Lord is raising up a, a select remnant out of that nation that's destroyed to show his strength, man. The weak things of this world is, is confounding the wise, man. That's why Esau's putting things in the books to uh, censor the internet, man. That's why destruction is starting to happen around the planet Earth, man. Earthquakes. You know, you had a family that uh, that bought their dream house in Hawaii, moved all the way down there, and how about she made shot destroyed that dream house with a volcano, man. They packed everything they owned and moved it down to Hawaii, and it was an Edomite family, man. It shows you that the curses is coming upon them, man. But this world, uh, this world has been spiritually blinded. They can't see what uh, what's in plain sight to the spiritual, man. Yeah, the um, what's up, what's up? Still yeah. Psalms chapter 36, verse 1. The transgressions of the wicked say within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattered himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Yeah. The words of his mouth. No, you got it, you got it. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He have left off to be wise and to do good. Yeah, and the Lord said, what has thou to do with my statutes, man? Because they picked up the book and couldn't get no wisdom from it, man. That shows you that there's no uprightness in the so-called white man, man. And the Lord says he chastened little by little, man. Just like he did the Canaanites. He judged them little by little until he just had to destroy them completely, man. And that's why we're out here to proclaim that the uh, the wisdom of... It says... Uh, Somebody gets Sirach 19 and I think it's around 22 because it says that the wisdom of uh, the knowledge of wisdom is not the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom man And Esau is the proof of that man all of this technology they got man and they still they still can't get right man It says you can't change the, uh, the spot the sh uh, spots on the leopard man Neither can you make the thing uh, straight which is crooked man Con, you got it? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, um this is Sirach chapter 19 verse uh 22. The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence. So so even the uh the so-called hidden societies of, of Esau and these other nations, that's not that's not prudence, man. That's not wisdom. They're conspiring against destroying the world and they laugh about it, man. They oppress people and they laugh about it. But the 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 the, uh, the irony of it is that Esau's elites are oppressing the common man of Esau, man. So as they laugh, the judgments are being prepared for them as well by their own people. That's why the Lord said the knowledge of uh, wickedness is not wisdom, man. Because look at how the, the rulers of this world are, are are running the world, man. In complete wickedness, man. Please ask the chapter seven, verse seven. Surely oppression make a wise man mad, and a guilt destroy up the heart. Yeah, and that's that showed that's proof that two thirds of our people have no wisdom, man. That shows that two thirds of our people have no wisdom, and that shows that uh, the, the, the hopeful elect are in the right state of mind, man. We ain't in the time of party and bullshit. Cause party and bullshit is gonna get your neck cut off, man. It's gonna have destruction and hit you as a thief in the night. They out here having a good time going to soccer games, but death is going to meet them in the, like a thief in the night, man. They're going to go from having a good old time eating hot dogs at soccer games to starving, man. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. That's why the nation of Esau, the so-called white man, as a nation, they have no wisdom, man. They are wise to do evil because that's what they are built to do, man. But as far as wisdom, you're not going to get wisdom from an Edomite, man. You're going to get uh, crafty uh, tools for wickedness, man. You're going to learn how to uh, how to lie, steal, cheat, destroy, subvert. You're going to learn how to do all kind of tools and wickedness, man. But you're not going to learn anything righteous or wise from the so-called white man because he's not built like that, man. Jay got that saying in the streets, you're not built like that. Esau's not built to be righteous, man. That's why this uh, this thing is going to touch them like a thief in the night. They're having a good old time right now, you know. It's a, it's a Saturday night, and these Edomites are having a good, blessed time. But the Lord says, rejoice, O daughter Edom. Wear your purple collar shirts, go to your soccer games, go to Orlando 
of Orlando Magic Games. Hit the Amway Arena. Call us niggas at your house. Because when that time comes, there's going to be no escaping, man. And that's for two-thirds of our own people, too, man. This is Job, chapter 21, verse 9. It's a lot of verse 15. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Okay. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? Exactly, because the Lord has given them all kind of tangible gifts. And because of that, they say, Who is the Lord, man? That's why Solomon said, don't give me too much, don't give me too little. Because if you give me too much, I might say, who is the Lord, man? I be in my comfort zone. That's why the Lord has, has uh, stuffed the bellies of the so-called white man. To get them comfortable. As a nation of people, they're, they're overweight. Their genes are recessive. Their confidence is being rooted out. And all that's left is for the final blow, the finishing move, man. And Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, the God that they don't believe in, is going to put it on them, man. Proverbs 21 and 15, read this again, say, What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? Exactly, and they've created a whole doctrine around that, and it's called evolution. It's called Darwinism. That everybody came from some single cell, and now the so-called white man is the highest level of human being. But he's recessive completely. That's the folly of this world, man. And that's the, that shows you that the wicked are in rulership, man. For anybody to come up with a doctrine like that, the, uh, the, uh, the, for anybody to come up with a doctrine like that shows you that there's no wisdom in them, man. And that the pride of their heart is going to be their own destruction, man. That they're going to be caught up in the snare of their own hands, man. You got it. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 6. It says, Shall not all these take up the parable? against him and they taunt and proverb against him and say woe to him that increased that which is not his how long and to him that laid himself with thick clay yeah and that's what's being that's what's happening now all these other nations are starting to recognize the uh, the, the wickedness of esau man in south africa you got uh you got them canaanites and and this israelites down there you know let that be known but you got them down there pushing out the so-called white farmers because they stole that land to get in there in the first place. And now the Lord is waiting centuries later to condemn them, man. So it's, it's being prepared. Uh, uh, um, a trap is being prepared for Esau, man. This is Michael, chapter 2, verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their bed when the morning is light. They practice it because it is in their power of their hands. And they cover fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. And that goes uh, from the elite all the way to the common man of, of Aishashua, man. Because they, uh, the common man of Aishashua might not have power to, uh, to uh, put genocide on us as a nation of people like his elites do, but he got the power to subvert you at your job. He got the power to talk about you and, and, and spread lies about you at your job because that's what they do. It says as soon as they be born, they, they, they uh, come out speaking lies. Whether they have much power or little power, whatever power is given in their hands, they use it for corruption, man. And that's why the Lord says uh, that they do not rise or possess the land or fill the face of the world with cities. That's why they're going to be the only nation that is completely destroyed, man. Because any power, any uh, liberty that's given to them, they use it for wickedness, man. Psalm 109, verse 1. Hold not thy peace, O power of my prey. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. They compassed me about also with words of hatred right. and fought against me without a cause. And that's exactly what they do to this day, man. You had a, a point where, where Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, I, I say the uh, slaves, were freed temporarily uh, through uh, Abraham. They, they were emancipated, I should say. And they weren't even seeking any uh, retaliation, man. That's when the, uh, the, the KKK was formed, man. When the emancipation uh, happened. 
that whole thing about the um, Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves was really put in place so they can join the white man's war. Man. Right, because they were losing. Right. You got it, you got it. You know, that's why that whole thing really came about, man. Because they was getting their ass handed to them during the, um, what was it, uh, the Civil War? Yeah. I believe it was. So they wanted Jake to be able to join his fucking military, man. Yeah, but but what the brother brought out was beautiful because that's facts, man. The union was actually losing, man. I eat a buffalo so Yeah. Right. The union was losing, man, and because they were losing, they did the Emancipation Proclamation, man. That's why Clinton is no saint. I mean, uh, Lincoln is no saint. Yeah. Clinton ain't either. And he was a homosexual too. Yeah. That's when that whole log cabin madness uh, coming to play, man. What's that? A uh, Brokeback Mountain? Yeah. But they always been into that shit, man. They've been into that since the since the Greeks, since before that, man. Since that before their history was actually recorded. Job speaks about how they were in the um in the uh, caves. You know how they were doing all kind of folly, and you got books out there that, that goes into how they were a dirty uh, nation of people, man. In those caves, eating our grandmama's skull and shit, eating ticks off each other's back, wearing clothes until they fell off of them, man. Disintegrated till it disintegrated their body. Con, lock you till it disintegrated, man. And now you fast forward to now, they calling you a heathen, man. They say you a savage. But that shows you the power of how uh, uh, about Shemel Shah says the work of the potter's hands. Con, this is Job chapter 30, verse 1. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdain to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, whereto might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat, for they, for their, for Salakia. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys and the caves of the earth and in the rocks. Among the bushes they prayed under the nettles. They were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And that's why in uh, in uh, Genesis they were called the serpent, man. You know, because the serpent has no regard, or uh, while the serpent has certain kind of wisdom, or, or I should say craft, the serpent has no regard for itself as a as a as a conglomerate. You don't see snakes running in packs, man. Because that's a nation of serpents. That's why the Lord called them a, uh, uh, the serpent of the field, man. On your belly shall you crawl. And even now, you have them doing that because uh, in this uh, book right here, it goes into how um, how you got uh, so-called white Christians saying that the Jews are Esau, man. But that shows you the serpent-like nature of the of, Edom, of the Edomites, man. Because they, they're even at war against each other, man. The moment that they get inside of in any kind of power, they start challenging each other. They did that in uh, Greece. You know, and they continue to do that and even now, man. They had the whole world uh, during the Renaissance period, and they found a way to war with each other again and again, man. So it says that they're the children of fools because they don't even have knowledge to uh, to work together as a nation of people. Holy, man. Even during the time of Alexander the, the, the Creek. Speak, speak on it, I don't know. They um, warred against each other, man. You know? He said, back up. Huh. This is Mark chapter 3, verse 23. And he and he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Right, that's what's going on now. You and, know, with, with Russia and with America. You know, that Esau's house is dividing against itself, man. Uh, verse 26, and if Satan rise up against himself, and he be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. 
Uh, and that's what's happening right now, man. And, and he, that scripture, I don't mean to cut ahead, you off, ahead, right? No, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But that scripture right there proves that it ain't talking about no damn spiritual demon, Satan, man. Uh, right. Uh, okay? It's talking about the so-called fucking white man, man. It ain't talking about no... How can... I, if it's just... If, 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 if it's just a spiritual demon, Satan, how can he be divided against himself? Uh, okay? So that's, that scripture right there proves that, man. You got it, right? Yeah, man, and that's that's what you have going on right now. Now you got uh, the New Age Esau versus Esau, which is uh, Russia going against uh, the Great Babylon, man. And that that uh, that is what's gonna bring in World War Three, man, because they're the big catalysts that are pushing this war, man. The tension is all in the room, and it's because USA and and Russia have this uh, beef that goes back since the Cold War, man. Because they got mad at how the spoils were divided during World War Two, man. So all of this, all of this shows you that the nation of, of Edom is falling, man. Because now they're going against each other, man. And the Lord did this perfectly according to prophecy, man. That the whole world may be a witness unto their wickedness and their folly, man. Because Russia's no better than, uh, than the USA, man. They're all fighting for the same power, but really they all have dominion on the planet Earth, man. They just don't know how to work together because they're a nation of serpents. Nation of greed. Greed, exactly. You got chapter 20 verse 15 he has swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them up again God shall cast them out of his belly he shall suck the poison of asp the viper's tongue shall slay him so the Lord repeatedly uh likens the so-called white man to a serpent man it says that that uh, serpent that uh that old serpent it says that in Revelations, man, it's complete. It, the Lord continues to make these references because that's the design of the so-called white man. Cunning and crafty as a serpent, man. It says that Esau was a crafty hunter, man. That's the quality of a serpent, man. And just like serpents, uh, in the wild, man, if necessary, they'll eat each other, man, if it come down to it. And that's what you see going on in the world. They've been given uh, the world in their hands as a nation of people, and they're still fighting over uh, over over inches, really. Because if you think about the grand scheme of things, if the USA and Russia actually got together, it would be no stopping that, man. That'd be an Edomite uh, monopoly, man. But the Lord doesn't have it set up that way. Because they're not built like that, man. They're not built to stand together, man. They do as a small as a small country of people, but when you talk about global Edomites, they hate each other, man. The French hate the Americans, just like Russia hates the Americans, man. The Turkey hates the American. They're they're Muslim Edomites, man. White man ain't got no morals, man. Nope. I thought you didn't go. He'll destroy his own people to push his agenda. You seen it? You seen it happen in, in 9/11? You know? His own people to push his agenda. But that's his design, man. What, what happened in uh, um, with Esau and Jacob, man? He said for one morsel of meat, man, he sold his birthright, man. Because he said, what, what should I have to do with my uh, birthright, man? Seeing that I'm about to perish. He didn't even care about his own descendants. That's, a, that's, the, that's the nature of Esau, man. And that's why the Lord is about to remove him completely, man. Because that's a cancer, man. That's a nation that's an example of a cancer. And it's going to be removed from the body of the planet. You have the body of Yasha Allah. Then you have the body of the uh, planet, man. Which are the people, man. The trees in the garden, man. This is uh, Psalms chapter 58, verse 4. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth their air, which will not hearken to the voice of the charmers, charming never so wisely. Come and uh, 
because uh, the Lord continues to make these references about this uh, this man being a snake, man. That's why. That's how they came in the Dark Ages and took over, man. They stayed low key. They waited for their opportunity and they struck, man. When you go into the history of the Dark Ages, man, the true lineage ended a, a long time ago because there came a point inside of the lineage where there were no more males that came out of the loins of the male uh, heirs, man. Which means that the rulership came to the, the daughter's husband, which was not of the same lineage. And when you go into the history of the Dark Ages, it shows you that's how they took over, man. They married into the families, and then they became, uh, they came into power because the daughter had the power, and there was no male. You got a, um, you got a piece of box? I got a piece of box. This is Psalms, chapter 11, verse 6. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snails fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. And this is uh this is Edom in the Zondervan's uh Bible dictionary. We're gonna go over that a thousand times if we got to man. And it says uh the nation and his people who were the descendants of Esau, he founded the country so his name is equated with Edom. I'ma skip down. And it says, Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgments. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from the Most High. And that's because you have, uh, you have history on top of history, on top of civilization, on top of civilization of wickedness uh, with Esau, man. His track record is reaching unto the heavens right now, man. Come that page five? Oh, I thought you was in the Esau Edom book. No, I'll, I'll bring that up too. And just for edification, say we're going to get who Esau is, man. This is uh, Who is Esau Edom uh, by uh, Charles A. Wiseman, a devil. Um, and it says, uh, I'll let you see it. Pause it if you need to. It says, thus Esau was racially an Adamite, a Semite, and a Hebrew, the racial stock of the white race, man. So that tells you from a from a devil, from the mouth of a devil, who Esau is, man. Huh. You got it wrong. This is Genesis chapter 36, verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau who is Edom. Now I'm gonna jump down. Let's say um this is 36 verse 8. Thus dwell Esau in Mount Seal. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. Yeah, because you have you got this folly where you got uh, people saying that Esau is the Arabs, man. Where they do that at, man? Esau, the Ishmael know who Ishmael is, man. I tell you this, Ishmael knows who Esau is too, man. That's why they over there chanting the great Satan and shit, man. They know something that we don't know, but they don't suffer us to uh, they don't suffer us to be put in graves, like it says in Revelations. They know we're um, Al El Kateb. They know we're the people of the book, man. Gun, gun. But they don't. They sent that. They, they sent that letter over to the churches over here, man. Bring it out, Art. Bring it out. Bring it out. No, bring it out, Art. <laughs> Showing who the real Israelites are, man. Showing that we are the the, the, the children of the Most High. You know, Ishmael know who we are. But I got a quick one, real quick. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one more soul of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And that's the nature of Esau, man, from the, from the, the, the very progenitor of the uh, Edomites, man. And this spreads, and now they have spread all over the world, and that that vibration is all over the planet, man. Throughout history, Esau has subverted, man. We can uh, we can take away uh, the history from uh, ancient world, even though they've done wickedness then, and just focus on modern day, man. Esau's oppressing Jacob even today, man. There's a um, there's a documentary on uh, Netflix called uh, uh, Explain. Um, I went into it on the video, but there's an episode called The Racial Wealth Gap. And in the racial wealth gap, it tells you that the average uh, median income of an average white family after debt, after they pay all their debts off, is 171000 
That's the average white household. The average middle class white household. You know how much uh, the average uh, income of a, a, a Negro family in the middle class? $17,000, man. After debt. And it's telling, and they tell you that that racial, that racial wealth gap is only gonna get wider, man. Cause somebody get uh, Haggai one and six. Because Jake don't, Jake don't do any studying and looking into uh, what's going on in the world to know how bad they really have it, man. They just go with the flow, man. But Esau has already had a 300 year head start, man. And then they'll tell you to pick yourself up by your bootstraps, man. When they done made 300 years of free labor off your ass, man. They built wealth off the, of, off the back of the free labor, man. And it says that the average, again, man, the average median white household after debt is 171000 And the average median income of a, a so-called black family in America after debt is 17000 man. And it says it would take you 200, almost 250 years to catch up if they even, if they give you equal opportunity in really give you equal opportunity, not just say it on the news, man. You got it up. I, I want to bring this out because this is exactly why this backs up what he says. Uh, this is uh, Genesis chapter 27. I'm going to start at verse 38. <laughs> and Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing by blessing my father? Bless me, even me also. O oh, my father, and Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of the heaven from above. And by the sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the, dom the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Now, if, the, if, if Esau was the Arabs, why they over there getting their ass beat right now? It says that they would have the fatness of the earth and they would live by the sword, man. They out there with rocks, man, getting their ass beat, man. That's why the Lord is showing you who Esau is, man, and, and the, uh, the hatred that he has for Jacob, man. Verse 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning, my, mourning for my father are at hand, then I will slay my brother Jacob. Hey, and, and, hey, and that's what's happening now, man. And he's slaying us economically, spiritually, physically, mentally, man. Economically, we just went into how their average household is, is almost is $171,000, man, on average. And the average uh, income of a so-called black family is seventeen thousand, man. But then we make up the largest uh, consumer group, man, as a nation of people, man. Which shows you that not only is is Esau wicked, but there's no understanding in our own people to defend themselves against these kind of snares and traps. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse thirty-eight. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in for the locust shall consume it thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes for the worms shall eat them thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil for thine olive shall cast his fruit and, and, and in the beginning during these uh during these early times of slavery negroes were on the money picking cotton man and it went into that on that documentary they had dollars what they were they, the dollars had negroes on it picking cotton man because you were the commodity in that day man it says that jake was worth 83 billion dollars in the u.s currency as a nation as a commodity man as a commodity you were 80 you were worth 83 billion dollars man and they tell you to just forget about it because now they're they're up. Now they they built and, and successfully had and sustained wealth in this nation off of the backs of free labor, man. And they speak proudly concerning it. That's why the Lord gonna kill these so-called white people, man, for everything that they've done and how they continue to be proud uh, concerning oppression, man. Death is waiting on these so-called white people, man, and the rest of these nations and two-thirds of our own people, man. This is Job. 
chapter 21, verse 15. They spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Yeah, so all this uh, wickedness that the so-called white man to get this, uh, did to get this wealth, he's going to be destroyed for it, man. And it's going to be but for a moment, man. Soon, surely we should see his fall, man. Surely we should see, uh, we, uh, can somebody get Psalms 58 and 10, because it says that the righteous are going to wash their feet in the blood of the wicked, man. We're going to take blood baths in, in the uh, blood of the wicked, man. Back to what you said. This is Zechariah chapter 11, verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, for I shall be Yahweh shy, my power, feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. And they don't pity us, man. They mock us. It's the exact opposite. They don't pity and they don't even uh, consider what they've done to our nation. They mock us, really. That's what you see on Fox News, man. That's what you see, uh, that's what you don't see behind closed doors with your, uh, your neighborhood friendly Edomite at your job, man. How they really don't like you, man. Or your nation, man. That's why the Lord said, uh, gather yourselves together, old nation not desired, man. Because financially, spiritually, economically, they're destroying our people, and our people don't even suffer to put themselves in graves. What you say? Earth is a flat plane. Read in Genesis, it uh, separates the waters from the waters. Permanent. Separates the waters from above, the waters from below. So let me guess, you believe Google, in a flat man. Earth, right? Flat Earth. Okay, is that gonna get you saved though? Is, is knowing that the earth flat or believing that the earth flat, is that gonna save you? That changed me everything. How does I that? I found out there was a lie that the, we don't live on a spinning ball. There's a lot of lies. My whole perspective, man. There's a lot of lies, that's just one of them. I got serious once I found out the true where, where we really live. Okay, what's your nationality if I, if I may ask? Well, I'm a little bit of everything, man. I what's your father? Probably a little bit of German, a little bit of uh, English. Okay, um, well, do you know what this message is? No. What we're out here talking about? We're talking about, uh, contrary to popular belief, Negroes are not African. And they're actually more related to the uh, Hispanics and Native Americans than they are to the uh, people in Africa. They're actually the, the lost tribes of Israel. The true Israelites. Exactly, and we're all true Israelites. No, we're not. You don't think so? No, there's a, there's a physical descendant of the man Israel on the planet Earth as a nation. Everybody isn't descended from the nation of uh, Israel, from the man Israel. Remember, Israel was a man before it was a place. From Judah, right? Judah Judaism. was Judah was a son of Israel. That was one of the sons. There were 12 other sons. That's why you have the 12 tribes of Israel. Every nation did, did not descend from those 12 tribes. But the original creation was Adam and Eve. That means we're all blood related in some way or shape or form. But through that, through those, uh, those three sons, Noah's three sons, the earth was repopulated and, and the table of nations is what you get from those three sons. Right. And one of those nations is Israel. The whole, the whole world isn't uh, descended from Israel. Just like the whole world isn't descended from Abraham. Abraham was the uh, first forefather who received a blessing from the Lord. So let me ask you a question. Do you think we live on a spinning ball or do you think we live on a flat earth? As, as, I, as I, I know we live on a spinning ball. But I'll tell you this, that doesn't, that, that's not going to get you saved. Whether you know that or not. That's well, not going to get you saved. Except the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. If you're an Israelite. Right. Because salvation is for Israel. So where, where would my salvation come from? If you're not an Israelite, if, so let's say this, if you're an Edomite, which is what the biblical na uh, nationality of the so-called white man is, your um, your judgment is going to be that you serve slavery for a thousand years and your nation is going to be exterminated according to the Bible. Interesting. Would you like us to get that in the Bible? I, you know, I, I trust your judgment. <laughs> okay, because uh, we can get it in the Bible. We're not speaking out our own heart and we can get it in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, uh, get uh, Ob Obadiah 18. What, are you guys going by the King James Version? Yes. Yeah, what's wrong with that one? No, that's, that's, that's one we, we want to be with. Oh. But like, a, well, I'll tell you this as well. Just because you look white doesn't mean that you're a, a so-called Edomite, a so-called white person. Because 
Negroes ruled in the Dark Ages in Germany. The Dark Ages are called the Dark Ages because uh, a lot of, uh, most of the rulers were, were dark skinned people. Portugal, Spain, Europe, all of these people. You see this? This is an Irish coat of arms. Huh. So, there were, and there's many of these uh, emblems over there in Europe showing you that the nobility in Europe before um, it got uh, into the hands of uh, the white, the so-called white man, it was ruled by Negroes. Well, the bottom line is you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Died on the cross for our sins. Let's get uh, Matthew 1 and 21. Because uh, Yahweh died for, the one you call Jesus died for the nation of Israel. He was the Messiah that was prophesied for to come. The second coming of our Lord and Savior. If there's one coming, there's the second, second coming. The second coming is now, is what we're all uh, waiting on now. But when he came on the it. earth, he came on the earth to make an atonement for the sins of the nation of Israel. Not for the whole world. He came for the world of Israel. Because that was prophesied in uh in Exodus. They told they told uh Moses told the children of Israel that a prophet was gonna be raised up like unto him. And they will have to listen to him. So the Messiah is the Messiah of Yahshua Allah, or what you call Israel. So like uh getting back to the uh you got it? Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin because they were the ones that received the covenant the other nations did not receive the covenant uh, that was given uh, by Moses and that covenant is the promise that God made as who, long as we well, who, who did he uh, make the promise with? Give bonus, give bonus now. Who did he make the promise with? To his people, whoever will turn to him. It's his people. Anyone who's going to accept the Lord and Savior no, Jesus Christ. Let me read this real quick. This is Matthew's chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And if you so need to see that, sheep. that's in the red letter. That's these, because the, they were scattered. Their punishment for not keeping the first covenant was that they were going to be scattered. So he came to make an atonement so that they could be regathered again. That's why they're, they, he refers to them as the lost sheep. And the atonement is atoning for your sins. But you have to have the law to sin. Don't we all have, don't we, we all have the law was given to, to the nation of, let's get it, uh, Psalms, uh, or well, if you had another piece yeah, up, bring it out. Any other yeah, that's Psalms. Yeah. We're going to answer your questions with the scriptures. We don't want you to think we're coming I out of our own heart. We want you to hear the scriptures. Hey, uh, first John, right? Chapter 3, verse 4. It say, whosoever, whosoever commit a sin, transgress also the law. For well, sin is a transgression of the law. So sin is transgressing the law. The, sure. the law was given to the nation of Yahshua Allah. It wasn't it just to uh, bring it up. Yeah. This Leviticus 26, this Leviticus chapter 26, verse 46. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. So he didn't give that law to any other nation beside the nation of Israel. So they were they were in the wrong because they had the contract and they didn't keep their end of the bargain, which is why they were in captivity. When Christ came, they were in captivity. They were under Roman authority. But that was because of their transgression. Because when you look at the Old Testament, every time they broke the covenant, they went into captivity. And it's the same thing today. Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans went into captivity in this day and age because of the same thing that they did in the Old Testament. Which is why the one you call Christ came, so he could break that cycle. But you know, as an American citizen, we're all in captivity. We are we all, all, all under but voluntary I'll slavery. say this, we're all we're all under slavery now. Because, because the, the elites Ohio birth you were signed a birth certificate. But right. you know what? Your mother's birth now. Why did your mother sign a birth certificate? So actually, you're already a property of the state. When you're defined as a U.S. citizen, you're actually, you're not a free man living on the land. You're a property of the United States right, government. That's, that's, how why the, that's, should, that's, why that's what the so white man of. does. Like we said earlier, the white man don't have no morals even even for his own people. Exactly, he'll man. Put, he'll, he'll put his Gatitude. own people Gatitude. into captivity to push his own agenda. That's right. And there's no way that you can get out of this voluntary slavery that we're in because you got to pay taxes. And you got to... 
you got to subject yourself to the system. And there's no way to actually completely get out of that unless, of course, you know, you go through a bunch of hoopla and a bunch of, you know, government contracts and whatnot. But you never, none of us are free men living on this land. Right, but this is the point we make. You said you're talking about sin, right? Yeah. Who can sin? What is sin? I just read you. Sin is transgression of the law, right? Well, yeah, sin would be, you know, So who was giving, no, this is the point, though. Who was given the law? The Israelites, right? Sure. So only Israelites can sin. No, it's 18 nations on the earth. But Moses, Israel being one. Moses was an Israelite. Right this, of course, he was yeah, a Israel. Israel. in the tribe of Levi. Listen, it. it's 18 nations on the earth, okay? Israel being one. 17 other nations. Yeah, uh, songs one only nine. Israel can sin. They was only given the law. Because personally, the way I feel, the way I read and understand the Bible, is based upon my whatever. I'm from the tribe of Judah. Whoa. Yeah. How is that? Well, you got to look at each one of these 